my friends and I are on a mission. A mission to find fun science facts. We're gonna call them sci facts. And the best thing about sci facts is they can be about anything and everything because science is everywhere. Sci fact number three is setting out to educate the world that we do not treat those of an entire religion based on the violent actions of a smidgen. We are of the same creation regardless of our denomination. But why is it that increasing statistics are showing that racial biases are hindering our American justice system? Is there a neurological explanation for the racial prejudices that are corrupting justice within society? Come hither. Let's study the brain before going any further. This is the human brain. This is the cerebral cortex, which consists of the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. From this view, we can also see the lateral sulcus. Now, if we look at a cross section of the brain, we can see the anterior cingulate cortex. And if we pull back at the lateral fissure, we expose the lateral insula. The insula is insulated by the lobes. By lateral means it is on both sides. And from here, we can see the medial prefrontal cortex. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> so, the study measured the brain's activity by using functional magnetic resonance imaging. The fMRI measures brain activity by monitoring the blood flow in the brain. Increased blood flow, more activity! When study candidates were shown the suffering of people outside of their race, scientists observed some blood flow to the anterior cingulate cortex and the bilateral insula of the brain. But when study members were shown the suffering of members of their own race, Scientists observed a dramatic increase of blood flow to the anterior cingulate cortex and the bilateral insula, as well as the activation of an additional cerebral area, the medial prefrontal cortex. Justice stems from these three structures that are most likely involved with neural signals of empathy, compassion, and rationale. To put it simply, racism isn't something we're born with, but something we develop from experience and societal influences. Society's deep entrenchment with racism and inequality has influenced the brain to show less empathy for people who are different. If we learn to unconditionally accept all individuals, we'll be able to foster a society of tolerance and compassion for everyone. Once we remove the prejudice lens from in front of our eyes, only then will Muslims and other minorities receive fair treatment in America. Let's tinker our implicit and explicit perceptual categorizations, working together to eliminate racist generalizations by engaging in meaningful intergroup social interaction. Find a diverse group of people and work on something that brings you together, like building a local garden for your neighborhood or any other community project. You'll be surprised what truths you'll learn about the individuals in your group. By acknowledging that we can't make generalizations about entire groups of people. We shouldn't be fearful of our differences, we should be curious to learn from them. I have an exercise for you. Find a friend and go with them to your local church, mall, synagogue, temple, or masjid. Walk in their shoes and immerse yourself. Learn about their life and discover their values. You know, you might find more similarities than differences. Until we end racist stereotypes, Muslims and other minority groups will remain scapegoats for the actions of a few. Demagoguery only hurts humanity's existence. Let's stop sensationalizing sectarian violence. Let's stop Islamic fear-mongering. Let's tell the news to stop campaigning fear. Let's tell the media and politicians to stop running campaigns of fear. Hatred and Islamophobia! If we don't put an end to racism, my First Amendment rights will continue to be violated. The core American values of freedom and tolerance coincide with the crux of Islamic ethic. Islam preaches peace, liberty, and justice, analogously to the American proclamation of liberty and justice for all. Aren't we all humans? But when will we realize the commonality within our human existence? And foster a world of tolerance, compassion, and coexistence where prejudice, bigotry is not a distraction and where a compass of justice is in constant action. The status of education. Justice and equality. Goodness and kindness. Family and nurture. Mercy and compassion. These are a few of the many fundamentals of Islam that deeply coincide with core American values. We have a duty under God to seek commonalities amongst ourselves so that equality, liberty, and justice are truly served for all. 
you, you and me. me. Peace, love, hope, respect, and unity. All these things are possible if we always remember that the violent actions of a smidgen are not those of an entire religion. One is to be judged by his or her own conduct, and prejudice stereotypes are no healthy construct. We can spread the truth and implement human equality. Together, the change can start from you if you just stand by me. The universities of Washington, Virginia, Harvard, and Yale have done preliminary research and digitized an exercise called the Implicit Association Test. Check it out with the link in the description and subscribe for more SciFact videos.